Hello. Today I'm going to give you some information about stroke. Stroke means acute vascular insult to the brain. In other words, it means affection of the brain secondary to a disease of its blood vessels. This disease may occur in one of two forms. The first form is occlusion to the blood vessel, and this leads to cut of the blood supply to a part of the brain, resulting in affection of its function. This occlusion results, for example, by a blood clot. And on the other hand, the other disease includes rupture of the blood vessel, leading to a bleeding in the substance of the brain, and secondary affection of the brain tissue by the mass of the blood, which has been extruded from uh, or coming out from the blood vessel, and the ischemia associating the presence of the blood in the brain tissue. Stroke, in general, its instance is increasing all over the world. In Egypt also it is increasing in general population. However, there are certain groups of patients who are at more risk of the occurrence of stroke. These groups of patients include hypertensives, diabetics, smokers, patients having cardiac disease. And in those patients receiving or who are put on anticoagulant therapy, they are at more risk of having bleeding in their brains more than the general population. In cases of stroke, we find in most cases some warning signs occurring before the, the incidence or the occurrence or the start of the stroke itself. These signs should be or should never be underestimated by all means. These include the occurrence of dizziness, vertigo, uh, unsteadiness. Uh, in all these, or in some cases, we can find the uh, sudden occurrence of transient blindness. In all these cases, any patient having those signs or one of these signs should go and see his doctor immediately. Because these warning signs means that there is the danger of occurring ischemia to the brain or the danger of having diminished blood supply to the brain and that there is a stroke is coming. And so in such cases, we should start a group of investigations immediately to protect this patient from the occurrence of a complete stroke. Uh, in most cases, we have to do a CT brain scan. The CT brain scan is a very helpful and useful investigation. It can be done in less than five minutes. And it shows us clearly how the condition of the brain is, if there is any uh, affection of its blood supply in form of ischemia, cut of blood supply, or hemorrhage. This investigation can be done in less than five minutes. And as I have said, it gives a very good uh, basis for the diagnosis to uh, the doctor. Uh, in some cases, we find these signs occur repeatedly, and in such cases, we call it transient ischemic attacks. It occurs with these signs, sometimes dizziness, sometimes vertigo, sometimes blindness, and it reverses to normal again after a few hours. In such cases, we have to start our investigations and start our treatment aiming at the prevention of, occurring of the occurrence of a complete stroke. In other cases, we can find that the signs are developing step by step, increasing progressively. The deficits the patient is having are increasing. He's having, uh, for example, some weakness in his arm, and then the weakness extends to his lower limb. And, sometime, and after a time, we find that his speech starts to be affected. We call this stroke in evolution. It means that the stroke is evolving, is increasing all the time. And here also we have to interfere early, aiming at stopping this process of evolution before, it, before the occurrence of complete occlusion or the occurrence of a complete stroke. In cases of ischemic stroke or the stroke that results from cut of the blood supply to the brain, we can prevent its occurrence in the early stages, but once it occurs, we have no, till the moment, a drug which dissolves the blocking agent or the thrombus in the blood vessel, as for example in uh, uh, cardiac thrombose. We don't have this drug still. We are trying to find a drug to dissolve the thrombus in the cerebral blood vessels as it occurs in uh, the heart condition, but it's still it's under experimental trials and it's not yet 
available in the market. In those cases, we start treatment immediately after doing the necessary investigations. The investigation in such cases includes examination of the heart condition, lab work for the blood. We have to check the high blood pressure and we have to check the blood sugar. We have to check the uh, cholesterol in blood and the level of the blood lipids. And we have to examine the condition of the blood vessels in the neck, which is going up to the brain to see if there is any narrowing in these blood vessels or any factors which affect the blood flow to the brain. All these investigations should be done in every patient having either transit ischemic attack or stroke in evolution or a complete stroke. Uh, in the same time, we start our treatment by controlling the blood pressure and giving drugs which encourage the cerebral circulation and encourage the uptake of the cerebral tissue to oxygen and glucose, which are very important to the brain. And we start physiotherapy from the very early beginning in order to uh, 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 prevent the occurrence of deformities in the parts affected of uh, uh, the body and to maintain its function in a normal uh, or near normal way. Uh, of course, the occurrence of ischemic stroke results in deficits in the neurological function, which part of which improves as a result of the treatment, the, of the treatment and the part of which remains for good. This has to be known because all what we have now is to improve the function and to uh, get the most uh, 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 better uh, results, but we can't achieve a complete cure in cases of uh, uh, stroke. So it's much more important to uh, be aware of the risk factors which result in the occurrence of stroke and get rid of it and to be aware of the early signs of stroke and start to treat, as e treat it as early as possible before the occurrence of complete stroke and before the occurrence of permanent deficits in the nervous system. On the other hand, cases of bleeding from the blood vessels of the brain occurs also due to these risk factors, mainly arteriosclerosis, which is a disease resulting from several factors, mainly hypercholesterolemia and the hyperlipidemia and the hypertension. And these diseases cause changes in the wall of the blood vessels, leading to many weak points in these blood vessels. And in cases of sudden rise of blood pressure, these weak points gives way and results in a bleeding in the brain tissue. In such cases of bleeding, usually the clinical picture goes much more rapidly and faster than in cases of ischemic stroke. In ischemia, we said that the patient develops the weakness or the neurological deficit in a, in a, a gradual way. But in uh, a hemorrhagic stroke or in bleeding of the brain, it occurs in a rather sudden and dramatic way. Uh, usually the patient is seized with a severe headache, disturbance in the level of consciousness, and neurological deficits in form of weakness of one side of the body, uh, affection of uh, uh, the speech, occurrence of convulsions uh, uh, or fits, and in most cases there is marked deterioration in the level of consciousness. To diagnose hemorrhagic stroke also it's very important to go immediately and directly to do the CT brain scan, which as I have said, it's a very easy and very uh, short lasting investigation. It doesn't take uh, uh, more than five minutes, but it gives a very uh, uh, good and solid basis for the diagnosis and for the line of treatment which differs completely in cases of hemorrhage than in cases of ischemia. Because in, in some cases, uh, 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 the clinical picture of ischemia and hemorrhage may be uh, rather similar and it's difficult to uh, differentiate between both conditions clinically. And so the CT mix makes this diagnosis because in cases of hemorrhage, we have to start giving drugs which stop this uh, uh, bleeding. Also, we have to control the blood pressure and control diabetes. Mind you, in such cases, we shouldn't go with the blood pressure very low or the normal level for a normal person. We have to know what was the normal for this patient. Most, most of, those, of those patients are hypertensive and they are um, acquainted to a certain level of blood pressure. So when we come down with the blood pressure, we have to go down with the blood pressure to the level 
which is normal to the patient, not normal for all individuals. Uh, uh, if we go with the blood pressure very low, we uh, affect the cerebral perfusion or affect the um, oxygenation and the glucose delivered to the uh, brain. And thus, we are doing more damage to the brain and we are not benefiting the patient anymore. Uh, these cases of hemorrhage are most cases treated conservatively by medicines and nursing uh, and physiotherapy also. In some cases, we have to interfere surgically to evacuate the uh, uh, blood from uh, uh, the brain. Uh, and the prognosis in such cases depends on the uh, size and uh, the site of the hematoma itself formed by the bleed. Um, usually we, we, we receive many questions from uh, people whether those patients having stroke are going to fast in the holy month of Ramadan or uh, not. Uh, I have to say that in the acute stage of stroke, whether it is ischemic or hemorrhagic, those patients are in need of several uh, groups of uh, drugs to be taken and it's extremely difficult to have them fasting in the acute stage. However, in the chronic stage, after everything is stabilized and the patients are maintained on a maintenance therapy and physiotherapy alone, uh, if there is no other disease which necessitates uh, that they have to take so many drugs during the day, they can uh, fast. And hoping you all the best during the holy month of Ramadan. Thank you.